I'm so glad to be with you again. My only disappointment is that I can't see you face to face. I wish that were possible, even as you're seeing me. It would be a great joy to me if I could so see you. But I have to imagine you, and I can do that rather well, although I can't imagine the variety of all of us worshiping, talking, having a friendship here together. People sometimes have a feeling that, well, we put it into a philosophical statement. Life has its ups and downs. Now, that's a pretty good philosophy to have in its own right, so that you don't let the ups get you too elated, and you don't allow the downs to get you too deflated. You take them more or less in stride. But none of us take them too well in stride, except as faith informs our way. Faith makes the difference. And from the faith point of view, ultimately, life doesn't have its ups and downs. It has its constant up, its constant upward. I'm thinking this morning, specifically, of the story of Joseph and of a phrase that came to me today in my reading uh, as I was going through that familiar story. Wonderful thing about any story in the Bible is that no matter how familiar it is, you always discover something more there when you read it through again. In Joseph's story, you'll recall, he started out with such high promise from his father's point of view. His brothers didn't feel that way about him. And eventually, therefore, his brothers sold him into slavery. In slavery, he prospered because Potiphar believed in him so much and found him such a blessing to his household. But then Potiphar's wife brought another element into the story. And Joseph suddenly, for his very integrity, was thrown into prison. And that's where I'd pick up the story with you today in Genesis 39, verse 21. There lay Joseph then, a captive, but the Lord was still with him. That's what makes life more than ups and downs. If the Lord is still with us, then constantly we're going somewhere. To say that life has its ups and downs is to say that it has no purpose, no continuing prospect. But if we say the Lord was still with him, even as he lay there a captive in a prison, then we're going somewhere. We're going up. Joseph could never have imagined how going up he was. The fact of the matter is, if Joseph hadn't had that unfortunate result of his own integrity with Potiphar's wife that threw him into prison, he never would have been in the position to meet the servant of the Pharaoh, who eventually, even with his fitful memory, would tell Pharaoh about him at just the right time so that Joseph would be available then to become not only the ruler under Pharaoh of all of Egypt, but the savior, in a sense, of the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, so that his own family then came down to Egypt, which was essential in the development of the eternal story. That's a story all by itself. But all of this depended upon what you and I would see as the ups and downs of Joseph's life. The up when his father gave him this embroidered coat. The down that came from that when his brothers despised him for it. The down that went further still when he was sold into slavery. The up that made him a trusted servant and then the down that brought him into prison. But all of that led to a great up, namely the fulfillment of the promises of God through Joseph's life. It wasn't, you see, a series of ups and downs. It was a series by faith of going up and up and up. And the downs, true as they were, from a faith point of view, were an illusion. The downs were an illusion. 
The road was constantly going up. So the scripture says, there lay Joseph then a captive, but the Lord was still with him. I don't know where you are today. Maybe in the down place, maybe in an up place. I want you to know that by faith, you can claim the Lord still with you. So whether up or down, it's up and up and up to the fulfilling of all the promises of God. God bless you and watch over you and love you. Amen.